Hi there. Today we're going to learn how to make a jacket for your pet. We'll need to take about 10 measurements before we begin the pattern. The first one is the length. How long do you want your jacket to be? So just place the end of the tape measure right in the middle of the dog's back and then let it hang down as far as you'd like the jacket to go. Do it right on the fattest part of your dog. I think that's about right. Yeah. But it's a bone here in the middle, in the front of the dog. There's like a bone sticking out. So put one end of the tape measure there and measure to what I call the rotation point. That's the other bone right here in the front on his leg. And that bone does a lot of moving around. That's like where most of the movement's gonna be when your dog is wearing the jacket, so you, that's an important point to take into consideration. So measure from there, so the tip of that bone to the tip of that bone. And write down that measurement. The next measurement is, again, what I call the rotation point to the center of his front leg. And why, the reason that's important is because that center of his foreleg is even with his nape, which is what we're going to be using for more measurements. So take that bone again, and these measurements vary a lot actually because the move, every time the dog moves that, that distance changes, but just kind of get the distance when the dog is just standing casually. So from that bone I just showed you, the rotation, to the center of the foreleg, which will be exactly perpendicular to the nape. Write that measurement down. Now you'll measure from the nape, which is his shoulder blades really, these two little bones here at the top. Put one end of the tape measure there at the nape and measure all the way to the dock of the tail, just before his tail starts. And we'll write that measurement down. Uh, make sure your dog's wearing a collar because I, I like my clothes for my dog to go up higher, not I don't like it to start the nape. So you have to take into consideration this angle here. Here, sometimes he holds his head at 180 degrees, as you can see right now, but that's because he's a little uncomfortable. Usually his head is a teeny bit higher. So, but in general his head is low. So I calculated um, before with the protractor between 150 and 160 degrees. I put a collar on him at a, you know, just snug but not tight, but, you know, very comfortably on him so to find where the, where the collar will naturally stay. So it's about there. That's about where I want it. So measure the distance from the end of the collar to his nape. And write down that measurement. Now we're going to take the next circumference around where you want the clothing to be, of course. So just wrap it around his neck. Again, not too snug and not too loose. And I'm putting it around where his collar, where I want his collar to be. Write that measurement down. Uh, now take <laughs> where his collar is to that bump, which I call the wishbone. Then two more measurements. You'll take it from the rotation point to the widest part of his chest. Looking at him from the top, you can kind of see where the widest part of his chest is. So a perpendicular measurement. Okay, sweetie, you're almost done. Right there. Oh, it's upside. Okay. So starting at the widest part of his chest or vice versa from the rotation point, measure that distance and write down the measurement. And finally, we're going to measure from his wishbone to the end of his rib cage. Now, if it's a female dog, you can measure it um, further back. And hopefully, it's parallel to the ground when you're measuring. So write that measurement down. And now we'll do the pattern. And you can go. You can go play. You're such a good boy. 
Okay, so now we've written down all the measurements and we're going to draw a rectangle. So the, I want the length of my jacket plus uh, my darts are going to be three centimeters wide. So we have to do the length plus three centimeters. And you'll, of course, use a very thin pointed pencil. I'm using magic marker so you can see. The measurement you took for this number two, wishbone to the part where the dog's leg rotates, in my case it was seven. Then the rotation point to the center leg, you would add that together. So seven plus four plus the measurement you took for the nape to the tail measurement. So add all three of those measurements up and draw that line plus in my case, again, the dart is going to be three centimeters, so I'm adding that. Right to there. Good. So that part is three. And now finish squaring off the entire rectangle. Once you already have this side, you just square off the other two sides. Okay, and this one will be point number four. So I have to determine where his nape is on this rectangle. And that's very simple. You would add uh, measurement number two to measurement number three, which is the wishbone to rotation. Rotation is right there. His nape. That's number five. And we determined that in my dog's case, he holds his head at about 160 degrees. So here's my trusty protractor we'll mark that. Now not point number five is where the little middle dot of the protractor goes. And we'll find that angle that's 160 degrees. So it's right there. And so that's 160 degrees. It's along a line here. You know, I'll just be but now you've got to measure the collar to nape measurement that you took, which is measurement number six. So we'll draw that in there. Measurement number six, and we'll put that measurement that we took. There we go. Good. And we can make that point number six. Now, in the meantime, we should put a, a little line here. I'll do that in a different color. The first measurement that you took on the top line of the rectangle, that was 0.1 to 5, take the same measurement at the bottom of the rectangle so you can have a sort of an imaginary line there. You use it as a point of reference. So here we go. This is just a little imaginary line right there. So that's 0.5. I guess we should give the point a, a number. So I'll, since I already put six there, I'll make this point five A. Point five A. The circumference, which was where the collar is. Now my measurement was 26.5, so you need to take half of that measurement. So half of 26.5 is 13.25. So you've got to, from point number six, make that measurement uh, and draw a line from six to wherever that line hits on this edge uh, at that measurement. Uh, it's easier to demonstrate than to explain. So, so we want, let's, 13.25, okay. So we put the one end of the you know, at, at zero on number six. And then we move this until the measurement we're looking for, which is 13.25, hits this line. So there we go, 13.25 is right here. So we'll put a dot there so we don't lose our spot. That's point number seven. So this is the part that's gonna go up the dog's neck. Here we go. Great. The measurement from where the collar ends, if you recall, that was on the dog, down to where the wishbone is, 
I measured six. So we'll measure six centimeters down here and mark that point. You really only can learn from experience. You know what? People can tell you how to make something and give you perfect instructions, and then when you actually do it, experience will teach you more than anything else. But, you know, this is a good basis to start from. So that's point number eight. That's where one of our darts is going to go. Um, rotation to the wide of the chest. So the rotation point, we need to find that. Uh, we recall that, that's why we use this as a reference. We recall that from the rotation to the center leg was four. So now, this will help us find it. We need it squared. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and do a line there. All the way across, because that's helpful. So that point, point number eight, Square it. Square it with the square ruler. You're not measuring right now. You're just making a square line to help you with your reference points. Here and there. Draw your reference line. I'm doing it in a different color. There. And now, you know, Wishbone to rotation, actually that'll be easier for me. So there's that point. Gotta do it in black. And there we go. That's the rotation point. Point number nine, I guess we'll call it. And the final thing we need to put in there is the wishbone to the end of the rib cage. And we've got this nice line that helps us. So there we go. That's that point. End of the rib cage line right there. We could call that point 10. Okay. And I like to put in, yeah, that was the rib cage, the fattest part of the chest, rotation to the widest part of the chest. Did I skip that? I did. That would have been number nine. That's, I shouldn't have made this nine. I should make this 8A. Now I'm messing you up. I'm sorry. We'll make that number nine. Rotation to the wide of the chest. Point number nine. This is especially important to know in males because that's where the strap is going to go uh, based around that. Maybe you'll put the strap a teeny bit behind, you know, or before, but there's a thick strap that's going to be put on. So it wraps around the dog and you don't want it to cover up important parts. Um, and we'll need those reference lines as well. So square that off. And draw in. I'm doing this left-handed so I don't block you. But remember, you'll be much neater than I am. So now we just have to put in the darts. Now my darts, as I mentioned, are three centimeters wide. So I'm going to put, this is the center of that dart. So I'm going to measure 1.5 to either side. I like the darts nice and big. So 1.5 to either side. And then, hmm, we're going to go right to this rotation point on either side. So there's that one and that one. And in this case, same thing, except this dart, I'm going to move it over because I don't want to interfere with the neck part. So here we're just going to make the dart to the side here, three centimeters. Anyway, you guys are a little more advanced, so my mistakes shouldn't concern you. You, you know how to do it the right way. This, so as it turns out, uh, the first little dart, I was, I was experimenting by making the dart go all the way to this point, but it made no sense. This is the point where you want a little bit of extra 
poof. So that's where his rotation point is. So the one dart is folded up to here and the top dart gives him a little more so you can see how this basically will wrap around the dog. I'm just going to go ahead and transfer the dart to the bottom like that. I'll round out the end a little bit just to give it a more interesting shape. Okay, I'll cut that and you're going to cut it out two pieces of one fabric and two pieces out of another fabric because one will be the lining and one is going to be the uh, the actual jacket. This is sort of a trapezoid shape and I like to make this kind of collar for my dog because then I could put a button or something and he can close it on really cold days. See here we have sort of a dart because if we were to go straight it would go here but I want a piece that I can feed into the front but here and then I'll straighten these with a ruler, of course, because I want it to be even. It's sort of like that. Now That's the collar. See, I cut it on a fold, so it looks like this. The first step is to close the four darts. I'm not such a great dart closer, but anyway, I closed the four darts, and now the next step now is to sew the two sides together, right sides together, uh, just along the back, just along the back here. So up this little curve, you know, where the dog's neck goes, and straight down the back. That's it. All right, now we have this. Have a look down here. So now we take the collar. We want it right sides together because I want my collar to be, you know, so that it flips up and wraps around his neck like that. You'll see when I'm finished. So start out by pinning that little pointy part right to the center seam and then this pointy part we fold over and do the same on the other side maybe you could even get now here's a big fat part that you're going to be sewing over so make sure your your machine has a good needle in it and then we're going to sew right from the beginning of the collar right over here, you know, and sew the collar on. And now the next step before we sew the lining in is to just fold it in half, right sides together again, and close the front. This is going to be a slip-on jacket. You, you have the option, if you'd like, to just sew on longer straps and put sort of a Velcro crossover, but I'm used to just slipping it over my dog's head, so he, he, had, he doesn't have a problem with that. But some dogs don't like you to slip things over their heads and then you, you should just make whatever modification suits your dog. Okay, great. So now we have two jackets. This is the jacket and this is the lining. All right, there we go. We have the, the two collars. Turn the lining inside out, so now they're facing the same way, and the lining will have the yucky sides facing outward and the neat sides facing inward, and then the jacket has the neat sides facing outward, so just put one inside the other one, put the jacket inside the lining. Now the important part is here, because you can't sew the entire jacket together in this case because it's there's a closed loop. First line up the collar perfectly even. Your So once you've lined up the collar, sew from here up that col up the line all the way around the top edge, all the way all the way and down to the base of the collar on the other side, 
only I'm just gonna clip off the point here just to make it look a little neater when I flip it over I don't cut the thread turn it inside out so then you can pull out the points like this now you reach inside and there's a hole there pull this one inside this one now and now you have you know just the collar sewn still remember and you have this part the wrong sides facing each other so you basically almost have it sewn but you still need to sew this part so now you pull this like this and now that the color's there it starts to look really funny and now flip the two sides together and pin that very neatly all the way around okay, so you see I've pinned it all the way around and into into here uh, so now we're gonna sew around I forgot to mention you should have determined where you're going to be putting the strap the strap that's going to be wrapping around the dog and you should have marked that point uh, before doing all that I've done so I hope you'll remember and that's the part you'll leave open so since I didn't mark it I'm just gonna say it's right here between these two so that that part you will leave unsewn but everything else you'll be sewing around see this is what it looks like now looks like a mess but you'll see how nice it comes out at the end I sewed all the way around until it got too difficult you know and it was getting too too bunched up so I stopped I ended there back stitch so it wouldn't come undone and now I took it off the machine and so now I'm gonna start on this side I'm gonna leave that space there for the strap which I should have marked as I mentioned before but now the nice thing is now that this is sewn I don't have to worry about the pins and I can pull this part through through that hole and that liberates this side a little bit more making it easier to sew. you can pull out as much as you need and then and end it where you've decided to leave the opening. And here we have it now find that opening where you're going to be putting the strap and pull it through there we go and it's looking pretty good now we just got to get the strap on now okay we're almost finished I made this rectangular strap at the very end there's a buttonhole I have a buttonhole function on my sewing machine and then that space where I pulled it through when it was inside out is right here so I just did a sort of decorative top stitch all along the bottom and took advantage of that um, by sticking the strap in there so the last step now is just put it on my dog and you know wrap the strap around him like this and find out exactly where I need to sew the button there's enough light. Where I live it's kind of warm but it gets a teeny bit chilly at night. So